Tonight, Port Augusta and Broken Hill residents clean up after summer storms lash the region. And Port Germain residents call for better signage to encourage tourists to visit. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Torrential rain has once again lashed parts of the Spencer Gulf overnight. In Port Augusta, businesses were impacted as sections of the city turned into an inland ocean in less than an hour. The SES remains on high alert as residents spent today cleaning up. A summer storm like no other causing chaos in Port Augusta. The city inundated with rainfall last night. A torrent of water smashing into homes and turning roads into rivers. The city receiving more than a quarter of its average annual rainfall in just a few hours. Port Augusta copped a very intense uh, thunderstorm yesterday evening around 8pm. We actually saw 50 millimetres of rain in just 50 minutes. A deluge tearing through the city's commercial road. Cars were drowned and had to be pulled from the water by the SES. There were four people uh, rescued from cars that got, uh, well, they came unstuck in the floodwaters. Business owners helpless as waves float off the streets and into their stores. Commercial road flooded, the water actually came to the doorway and people driving with their cars and making waves, more water came through the floor. The damage bill for some expected to climb. We're seeing a lot of storm damage related um, mainly ceilings, walls, carpets. When it just comes in, when you're getting three inches in an hour, um, you just can't, nothing can take that. Today, Central Oval looked more fit for rowing teams than football. While on Carlton Parade, the footprints of the once raging rapids remain. Emergency services and council working double time to clean up the mess. Some people I've spoken to have had no damage whatsoever and, and completely high and dry. For others though it's been quite catastrophic with roofs leaking, um, ceilings collapsing, that sort of thing. So there's a big job to do. While much of the water has subsided, the SES says some bodies of water may take longer to drain away, with generalised flood warnings to remain in place. We probably only see something like this once every two or three decades. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. The wet weather has also had an impact across the border, with Broken Hill and surrounding regions receiving significant falls. Roads around the city have been closed, with drivers urged to be wary of the conditions. Joshua Mercer has more. The Upper Spencer Gulf isn't the only part of our region that's recorded a wet start to February, with Broken Hill and surrounds also copying some decent falls. Figures released today show the city was drenched in the 24 hours to 9am this morning. The Weather Bureau says the Silver City recorded 61.8 millimetres in that time, a figure unusual for this time of year. Skies cleared this morning, but the overnight falls did cause some issues for the roads connecting Broken Hill to the country. The New South Wales Transport Department issues warnings for a number of highways, with some closed. Drivers urged to avoid Silverton Road, which connects Broken Hill to the tourist attraction. They were also advised to stay off Nine Mile Road and Daydream Mine Road due to the amount of water. The Wool Kenya to Ivanhoe Road was also impacted through the day. The local SES unit was on alert throughout last night and into today. The unit also reminding people to drive to the conditions and stay away from flooded roads. Anyone in need of assistance is advised to call the SES on 132500. The construction of a new COVID quarantine centre in Port Augusta is continuing. The site on Press Road is designed for those who are unable to quarantine at home. It comes as COVID cases spiked in Port Augusta's transient population last week after they were displaced by border and road closures. This was yeah, entirely foreseeable and, 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 and probably inevitable that this would happen. And to be scrambling around now to try and rebuild a camp that you've just dismantled, it, it's just farcical. The facility replacing a temporary settlement on Port Augusta's Chinnery Oval, which was closed last month. 
after being cancelled in 2021. The Broken Hill Festival has suffered another COVID-related setback in 2022, with one of the two scheduled now called off. Organisers had planned to run two festivals this year, one taking place from the 24th to the 28th of March, and the other from the 8th to the 12th of September. The March event, which was meant to be a makeup for the last year, has been postponed, leaving now only the September event. The Port Germain Progress Association is calling on the state government to improve highway signage leading into the town. Residents say the area doesn't get its fair share of visitors because travellers aren't aware of the town's iconic jetty. It's the sign you can't see from the highway. The Port Germain Progress Association says the town is suffering from a lack of tourism because highway drivers can't see what the town has to offer. Residents are ready to take action, asking the state government to fund highway signage that showcases its iconic jetty. It's old, it's illegible, it's faded or it's simply non-existent. We think that there needs to be um, wayfinding and directional signage so we can bring tourists and visitors into the township. Member for Frome Jeff Brock says he will be fighting to make sure Port Germain gets the signage it deserves. The other issue is signage off of into Port Germain. It's very dull, it's very uh, dilapidated, it's faded. Uh, that needs to be rectified also. Member for Stewart, Dan Van Holst Pelican, also backed the improvements at last week's candidate Q&A. Residents claiming tourists visit Port Germain to fill up their petrol or get a bite to eat without realising the jetty's significance. But had they been driving down the highway, there was nothing to tempt them and bring them into Port Germain. There was nothing that highlighted and spotlighted what we had here. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Broken Hill residents get the chance to tour the Royal Flying Doctors Complex and Mid-North farmers urged to sign up for a carbon to cash program. Welcome back. A Port Lincoln woman has lost her licence for six months after being allegedly caught drink driving. Just before one this morning, patrols stopped a silver Toyota sedan on Liverpool Street. Police allege a 67-year-old woman recorded a blood alcohol reading of 0 .090. The woman was reported for drink driving and had her car impounded. She will be summoned to appear in the Port Lincoln Magistrates Court at a later date. The Royal Flying Doctor Service has launched a new program to help the elderly during the pandemic. The government-funded InReach program, ensuring people aged over 65 can get out and about during these difficult times. Taking the opportunity to have a sneak peek behind one of Broken Hill's most valuable operations. Nearly 60 people toured the Royal Flying Doctors base to learn about their history. Funded by the local health network, those behind the initiative were pleased with the response. This is a program that's um, designed for people over 65, um, non-Indigenous or Indigenous over 55. And the PHN, Primary Healthcare Network, has extended the funding for another six months. The tours are part of a program helping over 65s remain active. Organisers getting creative in a bid to encourage people to participate. This is something that we're doing with the Bruce Langford Centre. So the t they have uh, a free tour. We've got a really good goodie pack that they get. We've got some soft drinks and we've got some cake. Today's activities are not the only thing Glennis and the other staff have had to assist with. The team has also helped locals book COVID vaccinations access their vaccination certificates, along with helping people secure passes into South Australia for medical purposes. As part of this tour, um, people booked in and we widely advertised it, um, but the program is free and available. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Safety at the Port Lincoln Airport has received a boost with an upgrade planned for the facility. Council has secured funding for a major renovation of the runway, with new lighting to be installed at the site. Lighting up an important transport hub, the Port Lincoln Airport ready to take off with its latest project. So what we're doing is upgrading all the lights along the runways up to new LED type lights. The main uh, point of that is going to 
improve visibility during inclement weather or night time so that uh, people can land. Construction of its new runway lighting is set to get underway. A gateway for the region's tourism, the airport is also the second busiest in the state. The council hoping to see more visitors return as travel slowly recommences. At our peak we were um, pulling in about 200,000 passengers a year. Uh, just before COVID that had um, come to 170,000 passengers per year. The funding coming from a state government program with other landing strips in the region also benefiting. And some work in Alliston as well, another 100 grand there. And Sejuna as well as getting some money to go towards uh, an animal proofing fence. It's been a successful few weeks in the funding front for the council. They also received extra grant money in the last few weeks, which will be used for a number of new projects. We've got this upgrade, we're going to try and do some more upgrades as well to the lights uh, into next year, um, but as well as a whole other range of uh, improvements and upgrades to the airport. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Farmers in the Mid-North will soon be able to get cash for storing carbon on their properties to improve biodiversity. The Northern and York Landscape Board is encouraging farmers to be part of the program as a way to diversify their income. They say money doesn't grow on trees, but that's about to change. Farmers in the Mid-North can earn extra cash from the federal government by applying to the Carbon Biodiversity Program Successful applicants will get financial support for growing native plants and trees on their property, with the federal government to help pay the water bill to keep them growing. They'll be able to get some Australian credit carbon, carbon units from them and then sell them on um, under the in, Emissions Reductions Fund and receive an income stream from that. Farmers can get more bang for their buck depending on how many trees and shrubs they can plant. From there, we can ex, um, export an Excel spreadsheet that will tell you the projected carbon credit units that will come from those plantings, and then you can turn that into dollars at the end of the day. The program is expected to have lasting benefits on the environment, also potentially drought-proofing farms. It provides a really good income stream to underpin the, agri uh, the um, agricultural income stream to the farming enterprise, which means that we're ensuring the long-term survivability and profitability of farming enterprises. Farmers can apply to the program on the York and Northern Landscape Board website. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us. A new remote learning program launched in South Australia and a Port Lincoln wine shortlisted as a finalist for a prestigious award. At-home learning will be easier to access thanks to an online portal which will be ready for tomorrow's return of school. The Our Learning essay website will host a number of web accessible lessons prepared by teachers. Each model has been designed by a year level specialist and has been aligned to the Australian curriculum. The lessons will be delivered via video or Microsoft PowerPoint. For more information, visit the Education Department's website. A Port Lincoln winery is getting national recognition for one of its premier vintages. Gardner Wines were shortlisted for Wine of the Year after producing one of the country's finest Rieslings. A local winery swelling their way into the record books. Wine State magazine recognising the quality of their produce with one bottle being placed on the shortlist for Wine of the Year. Our 2014 Riesling got 97 points, four and a half stars, and was shortlisted for Wine of the Year. The Riesling is amongst five other bottles that received more than 90 points in last year's judging. And this isn't the first time the winery has been recognised. In our very first vintage in 2009, um, we actually got our Grenache in the top 40 Australian New Zealand best wines, $20 and under. The recognition, a long time coming for co-owners Robert and Chris Gardner, after first acquiring the property in the 70s. Since then, they have worked hard to make it one of the premier vineyards on the Air Peninsula. Progressively over the years, we then went and put in uh, Grenache, Merlot, more Merlot, Cab Sav, Shiraz, Grenache, Riesling. 
Along with the vines, Rob also planted over 4,000 trees, attracting a range of different wildlife. The property expanding over 45 acres, with people invited to come through the cellar door. It's not a big cellar door, it's a little cellar door. Uh, again, it's just us. Um, and we, got, we started that Easter last year. And since then, we've been bumping along quite nicely. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Turning to sport now and in Port Perry softball, the Solly Cats had a dominant win against their opponents over the weekend, taking out victory by seven runs. With all the results from the weekend's local sporting fixtures, here's Mark Zeta. Despite humid conditions over the weekend, the region's soft bowlers were out in force, taking advantage of a gap in the rainy weather. Starting off with Port Perry softball, where games resumed following a bye week due to the state senior championships. The Solly Cats coming back from the break in strong fashion, convincingly defeating the Tigers 11 runs to four. The Tigers' Talisha Hiller brought some fight to the match with one hit and six outs. However, it was a pitcher's game for the Cats' Sam Burt, who only allowed four hits. Philippa Woodford's effort also helping the winning team with two hits and three outs of her own. It was a similar affair in the other match, with the Checkmates getting a 10-run victory against the Cougars. Strong pitching yet again sealing the victory, with Rachel Ciampi only allowing three hits on the mound. Jackie Beasley's performance at shortstop also contributing to the win with two hits and three outs. Moving across the gulf to Wyala, where their softball matches were much closer affairs. The Cats getting a win against the Eagles by two runs. In the other match, the Roadrunners defeated the Indians by five runs. Narida McIntosh showing great defensive skills with an amazing catch in left field while Courtney Ballack and Beck Anderson were the best players on the Indians despite their loss. Going down the Lincoln Highway to Port Lincoln Tennis, and on Friday night, Boat Supplies defeated Yumba Aquaculture by six sets. Port Lincoln Dental also had a six-set victory against McDonald's. While on Monday night, Sports Power Superstore swept EP Seafoods by the same margin. That's a wrap of this weekend sports results. If you have a team that would like to be featured in our next bulletin, let us know through our Facebook page. Stay with us after the break. Alex Sykes will join us with a look at the rest of the week's weather. That's next on 7 Spencer Golf News. Hello again. Time now to check the weather and see if there's any relief in sight from the wet and humid conditions that have hit our region in recent days. With the details, it's good evening to Alex Sykes. Thanks, John. And wow, what a downpour we had overnight and forecasters are predicting further rainfall to come. The severe weather warning remains current with the storm progressing from the far north of South Australia before clearing far east in the early hours of tomorrow. And as Edward mentioned earlier, a generalised flood warning will remain in place while those waters drain away. From 3pm, Port Lincoln was 22 degrees, Broken Hill was 25 and Woodna was 27 degrees. Looking further out across the region, and now Port Augusta and Wyala were 23, Port Piri was 26, Adelaide was 24 and partly cloudy, Kadena and Cleve were 21, Clare was 22, Cooper Pedy was 25. Taking a look at the satellite image now, widespread cloud associated with a trough is generating areas of heavy rain over parts of northern central South Australia. Skies are clearest in the far south with a building high. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southerly winds 20 to 25 knots, seas one and a half to two and a half metres and south to southwesterly swell one metre. Port Link will be cloudy in 21, Cleve also cloudy with 20 degrees, partly cloudy in Woodner 24. While it is set to reach 23, Port Augusta will be mostly sunny and set to reach 25 degrees there, Kadena partly cloudy and 24. Mostly sunny in Port Pirie with 26, Clare will reach 21 
In Broken Hill, be mostly sunny and a max of 24 degrees there. Taking a look further through the week now, sunny and 27 in Port Augusta and Cooper Pedy on Thursday, partly cloudy in Port Lincoln with 23. Well, in Broken Hill, both sunny and 25, Port Pirie 29. A look at Friday now, mostly sunny in Woodner with 31, sunny in Wyla and Broken Hill, and both reaching 27. Kadena 29, Port Augusta and Cooper Pedy both sunny with 30 degrees, Port Puri also sunny and 31. Heating up on Saturday, Port Augusta, Port Pirie and Woodner will be sunny and 33. Mostly sunny in Port Lincoln, 27. Wyler, 30. And Broken Hill, 29 degrees. So stay safe and away for from floodwaters, everyone. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. And we will return tomorrow night at the usual time of 7pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.